I call Brendan Horan. Thank you, Mr Chair. I will take a, a short call on this holidays bill and to address the proposed commencement date in Clause 2. Sir, the bill, as introduced, would come into force the day after... the day after the assent was given, and that's... Order, order. Sorry, sorry, my member. I'm, I'm trying to hear Brendan Horan. Brendan Horan, please. Thank you, sir. As I was saying, uh, I'd like to address the proposed commencement date in Clause 2. Uh, the bill, as introduced, would come into force the day after the assent was given, and that's good, sir. Uh, it's axiomatic that if Parliament enacts legislation, then it should be implemented. Uh, but while obvious, that does not always happen, sir. As reported back, it would come into force on the 1st of January 2014, nine months from now. And on the face of it, that may not seem to be a problem, as the first occasion on which the law occasion will have practicable uh, effect is on Anzac Day in 2015. But, sir, long commencement dates can have unintended consequences. It's been the habit of uh, previous governments to, uh, parliaments to write governments of the day a blank cheque, but at least this bill is not open-ended. And uh, where we have allowing acts to be brought into force by order in council and yet not specifying any default date, and for example, uh, part of the Summary Proceedings Amendment Act 1976 is still not in force 37 years after the parliament passed a law. And there are over 30 such acts on the books, not in force and with an open-ended indefinite commencement date. And things can go wrong with definite but long commencement dates. For example, the Criminal Procedure Act was passed in October 2011, yet may not come into force until October this year. And that act amends <laughs> numerous other acts, including the Chateau Companies Act 1977, and that's fine and good, one might say, but John Banks came along and repealed the Chateau Companies Act 1977 using the Regulatory Reform Repeals Act in August 2012. So the left hand of National does not appear to know what the right hand of John Banks is doing, and they are amending a repealed act. So long commencement dates are in general not a good idea. Now, sir, this debate will conclude soon and the House will vote. And my vote may be cast in person or it may be cast by proxy. And I acknowledge and thank the Greens for their support of democracy, sir. And six other MPs may be in the same position as me. And it's good that they are able to participate as MPs, the equal of my and their 114 other colleagues. But there is a problem when it comes to voting on this bill, and that is that we have a Prime Minister who thinks we should not be able to vote here. The only thing toxic is that we have a Prime Minister with a contempt for democracy, and that, sir, uh, clearly will not do. The Holidays Bill will pass, despite the Prime Minister's toxicity, with the votes of Labor, the Greens, New Zealand First, Māori Party, Mana, United, and myself, as the independent MP. Mr Speaker, I gladly support this bill. I call David Bennett. Chairman. Thank you, Mr Chairman. And um, I'd just like to defend our Prime Minister.